Let me just quickly go over to the solutions of the problems. In this case, what we are told is that for this particular pulley, there is a there is an idler pulley, and then what do we have? We have this belt that is AB going on over the pulley. The point of contact of the idler pulley with the belt is at B, and what we are told is that that at the instant shown, the velocity of point A is 375 millimeter per second to the left. Okay, three uh, is in this direction, and the accelerate uh, sorry. Velocity is in this direction 375 millimeter per second and the acceleration is 225 millimeter per second square to the right. Now, note that this belt is, uh, is uh, contiguous, okay, each point will move in the similar way. So, what we realize is that, that even at point B, okay, the velocity okay, of the belt should be in the same direction okay, as point, uh, so it, it should have the same magnitude 150, uh, uh, 375 millimeters per second and should be to the left and acceleration should be. 225 millimeter per second square to the right. Okay, so 375 millimeter per second square second is the acceleration velocity. 225 millimeter per second square is the acceleration at this point, because this point B is common to the belt and the idler pulley, and also in this mechanisms we assume that there is no loss of contact between the belt and the pulley. What we know is that that this pulley will undergo some angular acceleration about the center, about this uh, uh, point of uh, connection, also. Uh, uh, so, as a result omega times r okay, will be the corresponding velocity, the velocity has this direction. So, omega should be in the anti clockwise direction and what will that be? V is equal to r omega, from that we can find omega is equal to V by r. Similarly, the angular acceleration of the idler pulley, okay, how do we find out? Because we know that a t okay, tangential acceleration will be nothing but r times alpha where alpha is the angular acceleration, what should be the direction? It should be in the clockwise direction because that will ensure that at is in this direction to the right. So, we know omega, we know alpha. Now, what we want to find out that for the point B on the pulley, what are the components of acceleration? And we can realize is that, that this point B, what are the motions it has? Okay? Point B has a tangential motion, okay? uh, tangential velocity, but the velocity also changes direction. Why? Because point B moves in uh, along a circle. Only difference is that that for point B instantaneously, the angular velocity is not constant. There is also acceleration. So the tangential component, so the the normal component or the downward component of the acceleration at point B simply will be r omega square, whatever we had discussed till now. Okay, r omega square will be the normal component, and the tangential component will be simply in this direction. What is that component? T, t is equal to a t is equal to 225 that is given to us. So, at this point the normal component is equal to omega square r in the inward direction tangential component is already given to us and we are done. Okay? We find out what is the resultant, what is the angle and we have our final answer. Now, the question is this, what we are asked in this problem, it is a somewhat complicated link mechanism, but it is still a 1 degree of freedom problem. Okay? Think about it, you will realize that it is still a 1 degree of freedom problem. We have AB, BD, DE, all the dimensions are given to us. Additionally, we are also told that in the position that is shown to us, bar AB has an angular velocity of 4 radians per second in the clockwise direction. So, we are asked to find out with this information, determine the angular velocity of bars BD and bars DE. So, what we use is we use the simple trick that we have been using so far. We know that velocity of A is 0. So, velocity of B will be velocity of A plus what is this? It will be omega. What is omega? In this case, omega can be written as omega into k hat. So, let us look at point B. What is the velocity of point B? Velocity of point B is velocity of point A which is 0 plus omega AB cross R of B with respect to A that the position vector of B with respect to A. Now, what is omega AB? Note one thing that if this is our x axis, this is y axis, the rotation is clockwise. So, note the thumb goes in the plane, whereas the z axis comes out of the plane. Okay? So, if you really want to use coordinate system, this is one sure shot way of doing this problem is that this is x, this is y, this is the angular velocity in the clockwise direction. So, omega times minus k 
is the vectorial form for the angular velocity. So, we will see that the angular velocity of uh, AB will be minus 4 radians per second, it is given to us minus k, why minus k clockwise in the plane of the paper. So, R of B comma A is what in this coordinate frame, what is it is equal to minus 175. So, let us fix a coordinate axis x y. So, if this is x then the coordinate of B is what minus 175 i, i is the unit vector in the x direction. So, straight away okay, this is again this is the simplest way of doing it, there are multiple ways in which we can do it, we can use the vectorial approach, but it will be more complicated here. Additionally for example, we can also use the virtual work kind of approach that we had discussed earlier, but this is the simplest and the most sure short way of doing this problem. So, R of B with respect to A okay, is nothing but minus 175 i. So, what is this V B? It's omega i B cross R B slash A, position vector of B with respect to A. Just do the algebra and you will see that V B is 700 millimeters per second J upwards and it makes perfect sense because we know from our simple kinematics that if this is omega point B will only move upwards and the magnitude will be 175 times omega. So, we get V B. Now, what we do is that we want to find out what is the rotation of this rod, rotation of this rod. So, we work our way down. Now, let us go to rod B D. To rod B D what do we have let us say omega B D the vector omega B D is magnitude B D k hat. Okay. So, if it is anti clockwise it is positive clockwise omega B D okay, this, this, this becomes negative. What is position vector of D with respect to B? Note that our x y coordinate is how x is uh, to the right y is upwards. So, the position vector of D with respect to B is simply just minus 200 j, j is the unit vector along the y direction. So, what is V D? This is a very mechanical procedure. Okay. So, if we make sure that all the coordinates are appropriately drawn, all the signs are appropriately taken, then in a very simple way we can get all the answers. So, what is velocity of point D? Will be nothing but V B vectorial plus omega B D. What is omega B D? Is the magnitude k hat cross radius uh, position vector of D with respect to B. Just substitute all the values here. What will we see? That velocity of point D will have two components clearly. Why will it have two components? Because D now is linked with uh, uh, rod DB is linked with point B. Because B moved upwards okay, clearly it can have a vertical component and because of the rotation it can had, have a sideways component. Now, what is the sideways component? Okay, 200 omega B D i. Now, omega B D we said anti clockwise is positive. So, if this is anti clockwise 200 into omega clearly in the positive direction should be the x direction velocity what is the upward velocity clearly is the same as point B. So, our logic okay, so all this mechanistic calculation we can also reinterpret and make sure that our calculations are fine. So, it is 700 j which is nothing, but the velocity at point uh, B and this 200 omega B D is nothing, but because of the rotation in the anti clockwise direction for this, this is the velocity in the plus x direction or to the right. Now, this is an unknown, we do not know what this quantity is, let us work our way down further. Let us go to rod D E. So, what is rod D E? Okay, uska omega is omega D E is equal to magnitude. Okay, again if it is anti clockwise plus clockwise minus. So, k hat position vector of D with respect to E, how do we write? Look here. So, uh, D with respect to E. Okay, so, it is going in this direction. What is the x plus 75 i okay, plus 100 plus 175 which is minus 275 i plus 75 j this is to the left. So, the minus sign upwards. So, plus sign. So, we know V d is equal to omega d cross R d e just substitute everything together. What do you see that V d will be equal to minus 2.75 d e with respect to j okay, omega d e j minus 75 omega d e i will be the velocity of d with respect to e. Why? Because absolute value at e is equal to 0. So, we are done now. Okay. So, everything is now given to us. Okay. Does it make sense? It makes perfect sense. Why? Because if this is omega d e, we know that rod d e will have pure rotation okay, about point e okay, in the clock anti clockwise direction and as a result the velocity will have a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of the rod. We can take a dot product and immediately verify that this velocity vector is perpendicular to the direction of this rod. Now, what do we do? We just look here that v d okay, chi expression comes out to be omega d e cross r d with respect to e, but v d is common both to the top rod and to the bottom rod and both should have the same velocities because otherwise this rod will split open 
and the only way to have the split velocity, uh, uh, the same velocities is we equate these two and immediately see that this will be equal to 700. So, from that we can find out that omega d e will be 7 minus 700 divided by 275. So, omega d e assumed to be in the anti clockwise direction minus means it is actually in the clockwise direction and omega b d ok straight forward ok we got omega d e equate these two omega d e is known from that we can find out what is omega or the angular rotation rotational speed of b d. So, from this top down approach you start from here go all the way till here we know that the absolute values of a and e are 0 and from that we can figure out knowing this is the angular velocity what is the angular velocity of each and every point ok. So, I hope this is clear ok. So, now let us move on the third problem is reasonably straightforward. ok. You can have a look at it later on. So, fourth problem is the problem on instantaneous center of rotation what you are asked to find out that in the position shown bar a b has an angular velocity of 4 radians per second clockwise ok. Determine the angular velocity of bars b d and d e b d and d e and let us use the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. Now, note one thing is that look at point d e what is the only way this d can move ok. What can be the instantaneous velocity of point d in what direction? The only direction it can be can be only along the line which is perpendicular to d because that is what it is this rod d e is pinned around point e and it can it can, it can only have a pure rotation about point e and as a result ok the angular velocity if it is clockwise motion if the, if the rotation is clockwise then the angular velocity uh, the, the velocity of point d is in this direction. If the rotation is in the anti clockwise direction the velocity at point d is perpendicular to this but in the inward direction. So, we know what is the line along which the velocity should lie. What about at point b? Point a b ok point b is common uh, is common to rod a b and b d. So, when you view this from rod a b point of view a b undergoes a pure rotation about a ok. What is the angular velocity? 4 radians per second clockwise, but point b can only move ok in the downward direction clockwise b can only move vertically and downward. So, we know that there are two points ok there are there, there is one point here. So, for rod b d let us now think about rod b d b ka velocity should be the same should act downwards d ka velocity should act in this perpendicular direction. So, when we now look at rod b d we know two points and we know the direction of velocity at two points and those two directions are not parallel to each other. So, what do we do? To get the instantaneous center of rotation this is the velocity for rod b d we are talking about rod b d velocity has only this direction here the velocity can have plus or minus direction ok. But let us say it has this direction join this perpendicular line join this perpendicular line and what you will see is that this c ok this is velocity at d join this velocity at b join this ok. This c will be the instantaneous center of rotation this angle is beta and as a result this angle can also be seen to be equal to beta. Now, what do we know this is 100 millimeters. So, what do we know that c b into omega is equal to v b omega is given to us from that we can find out uh, uh, ok. So, we do not know what is omega, but what we know from the previous uh, portion is that that the velocity at this point b will be 4 radians per second into 250. So, we know the magnitude of the velocity, but that magnitude of velocity is also equal to omega of this rod multiplied by distance c b. How do you find distance c b? We know this distance ok. So, point 1 divided by tan beta will get b c. So, this distance b c multiplied by omega b d will be equal to velocity. What was that velocity? It was 4 radians per second into 0 0.250 meters which is 1 meter per second substitute that we get what is omega for this rod to find out that the magnitude is this uh, the, the direction of velocity here is this, but what is the magnitude? What is the magnitude here simply is equal to omega times this distance c d how will you get c d this distance is known. So, 0.1 divided by tan 21.8 uh, uh, sorry uh, so 0.25 divided by cos beta we can immediately find out ok what is uh, from simple geometry here what is this distance d c and once we know d c omega already found out omega times d c will give us what is the velocity at point d. So, this concludes our tutorial.